So once we're done creating our project, we typically are going to be working as a 16 by nine project. And so we're gonna have some widescreen, you know, something that we typically post to, let's say YouTube or Vimeo or something like that. But let's say we wanna take that same content and post it to a social media platform that is specific to phones. So a lot of the times that's going to be tall video or square, completely different aspect ratio. So let's jump into how we would actually do that. There are going to be some things that we're gonna to have to deal with as well with making sure subjects are framed in the middle of the scene because we could be working with this widescreen and we could have a character over here or some subject matter over here, but we want it to be in the middle of the frame when we go to these other platforms. Let's jump over and I'll show you how to do that. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to let you know about my website, jrtv.com, where we have hundreds of different templates available for DaVinci Resolve 17, 16, and 15. All of them are backwards compatible with the newest version of DaVinci Resolve. If you haven't taken a look, the selection of templates is pretty diverse with everything that you would typically think when you think templates, everything from titles, transitions, infographs, logo stings, slideshows, video displays, video effects, compositing elements, as well as a bunch of color pre preset tools specifically for DaVinci Resolve's color page. If you're interested in taking a look for yourself, there's a link in the description. The first thing that I do wanna say is the tool that I'm going to be using is studio only, but I will show you how, if you do not have the studio version of DaVinci Resolve, how you can do the same sort of thing in DaVinci Resolve if you just have the non-studio version. So first thing we're gonna do is I just wanna show you quickly the timeline that we're working with. It's just normal content and we have a dog that's kind of in the middle of the screen and we have a bunch of dogs running around. So subject matter that's moving back and forth on the screen. And then here we have some people with kind of like a panning uh, shot as you can see there. So we have a couple of different shots going on here and I just kind of want to show these shots because of what we're gonna be using. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our timeline and we're gonna be duplicating it because we need to change the resolution but we don't want to affect our main timeline if we ever need it for any reason. So we're just going to right click on here and then come down to duplicate timeline. In here, we just have copy. I just wanna change that so that I know uh, in the future what this timeline is. So I'm just going to double click in here. I double clicked and it uh, switched over, but I just wanna come in here and just put it in here. Instead of 16 by nine, we're gonna go nine by 16, just so I have a reference. And then we're gonna come into here and we're gonna go over to timeline settings. In the timeline settings panel, we're gonna open up uh, all of the uh, attributes here by checking use project settings. And we're gonna switch these because we wanna do a tall video. So instead of 16 by nine, we're gonna do nine by 16. I'm just going to come into the first one and do 1080 and then 1920. And then we're gonna come down here to mix max resolutions because obviously none of my footage is this resolution and we're gonna be switching this over to scale full frame with crop. Clicking that button there, now we have our tall video. But as we come through our timeline, we can see that we have a couple of issues. One, my dog is kind of chopped off here, and these dogs, they're kind of in, in the shot, but you know, they're not super centered. And this one, they're kind of all over the place as well. And then here, we're actually cutting off one of our subjects, and we're just showing the middle of the screen. So. This is the studio aspect of DaVinci Resolve. We're actually going to be highlighting everything. And then over here in our inspector, we have this smart reframe. We're gonna open that up and then just hit reframe. What this is going to do is in the background, it's going to be looking at every clip, trying to figure out what the subject matter is. And then it's going to track the subject matter and keyframe it so that it's in the center of the screen. Now, this isn't always accurate, but um, it's a good starting point and it actually saves a ton of time. So it's done now. So we'll come over back over and take a look. As we can see right out of the gate, our uh, two people are in the middle of the shot. So that's good. Uh, if we come back to the dogs, well, this one's in the middle. That's looking great. And we can see up here, we're having some position changes. So we now know that there's some going on there as well as in this one, if I click on it so you can actually see it. This one's changing quite a bit and we have a lot of keyframes. So if I open this one up and we actually look at the keyframes and open this up, we can see we have a lot of keyframes. So that's pretty much all it's doing is it's just creating keyframes. Um, but if we take a look at this one, we can see that the black dog's head, the, the black 
dog's head is going off the frame. Maybe the black dog is the subject matter and not trying to get in, you know, get both dogs. Or if I looked at this, I'd say, okay, well, the multicolored dog is the, the one that uh, is currently following. So we're gonna uh, change this. So what this is really doing is if I come over here into my transform, it's just making keyframes going back and forth. So if I just reset this, and let's say I had to do this manually, if I didn't have studio, all we're doing is we're just gonna set a keyframe and then come up a little bit and say, okay, well, right there, we're gonna bring it over. And as you can see, we're going up and down. So instead of doing that, what we're gonna be doing is when we hold down shift and go left and right, it doesn't allow us to go up and down. So if I go back and hold down shift while I'm doing this, I can go like that and then go like that, and go like that. And this is how we would be doing it manually, right? If we didn't have studio. So I just wanted to let you guys know that don't have studio, how you would go about doing this. And this is all that studio is doing as it's just retracking it so that it's in the center of the screen as much as possible. And as you can see there, look, it's looking pretty good. I could probably add some easing curves on there, but I just wanted to give you an idea how that's done. So if you do have studio, we are going to, I'm gonna show you another aspect of the smart reframe so that we get just the dog to uh, be in the center of the frame. So. In here, we're going to go to object of interest and then reference point. And we're going to really just move this until we get whatever our subject is. Wherever we put our playhead, that's where it's going to be grabbing the subject matter that we want the reference to. It can be anywhere in the in the uh, shot. So once I have that, I'm going to click this button and it's, it's going to turn on the smart reframing tool. And here we have this little box I'm just going to pick the dog's head just like that. And now once we have it all set up like that, I just hit reframe. It's going to just take that one clip and redo it. And now let's turn this off so we don't see it and take a look at what we have now. So we just wanted to follow the black dog and that's what it's doing. It's following the black dog. So that's, that's it in a nutshell. Once we're done with this, we can go to our, uh, deliver page and render it out. One thing that I did want to show here, and I didn't really state it earlier, is that this particular shot here, it has a color grade on it. So once we, whenever we duplicate a timeline, it's going to copy over everything that's on that timeline exactly. So we don't have to be concerned with one shot, you know, we color graded it, another shot had something in fusion and so on and so forth. It's going to copy everything over. So once we make that duplicate, it's going to copy everything over and it's as easy as that. Hopefully you guys learned something in this one. That's how you use Smart Reframe for those of you that have Studio and you have the ability to use it. Those for you that don't have Studio, this is another reason why to get it. Saves a little bit of time. But if you don't have the means to get it, you can simply do it on your own. But at least now you know how to set up your uh, project from a, an existing timeline so that you're a step ahead and don't have to recreate the whole project. So with that being said, I'm going to get out of here. My name's JR. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, peace.